Um, but let's start with the ovaries, right? So most people have two ovaries and actually it's very hard to find a, an accurate depiction of where they sit. Um, every textbook shows you this kind of like T shape, right? Where the ovaries are up here. They actually sit right down here. This is very floppy and mobile. Same with the fallopian tubes, nothing are really holding these in place. So they're kind of just with gravity hanging out down here on both sides. Um, and they are really small actually. They're about three to four centimeters and they contain eggs, right? So we are born with two to three million eggs on average. By the time you enter menopause, the average age of which is about 50, you have less than a thousand. Um, so, you know, this is a process that's happening throughout our lives um, and it's a normal part of our biology. Um, roughly once a month, but it's different for different people, an egg is released from one side or the other. And that's if you're not on birth control or actively preventing it, or if you don't have a condition that prevents you from ovulating, the egg is released in the fallopian tube and it will survive for 12 to 24 hours. And if it's not fertilized in that time frame, it disintegrates, right? So the fallopian tube is just basically a conduit that connects the ovary to the uterine cavity. And it's not producing any hormones and it's just a place for sperm and egg to meet. The ovary in contrast is producing hormone. That's what's producing estrogen and progesterone. And the estrogen is really dominant in the first half of the menstrual cycle. And that's what causes the lining of your uterus to thicken, right? And once you ovulate and release an egg, that site where the ovulation occurred starts producing not only estrogen, but progesterone. And if fertilization doesn't take place of the egg that's here, eventually those progesterone levels are going to drop and this lining breaks down and that's how you get a period. So that's why tracking periods are important if you're trying to understand the frequency with which you ovulate. So the uterus then is basically where a fertilized egg can then make its way slowly over the course of five to seven days. Um, and this is basically a cavity. Um, it's a cavity and it's supposed to be ideally smooth like this, but you can have things like polyps or fibroids, which are benign growths, like skin tags almost, that could get in the way. Um, but you know, this is basically um, referred to a lot of the time as the womb. That's what people are really talking about. It's hollow, it's co a collapsed cavity, and this is what holds the fetus during pregnancy. Um, so you know, the reproductive purpose of building up that lining is to support a potential pregnancy and shedding the lining is to kind of regenerate those cells. So that's a process that's always happening. And then the cervix is this lower part of the uterus. The uterus is this thick muscular organ and the cervix is not really separate from it. It's just a lower part of it. And it's the entryway. This is kind of like the gatekeeper, right? And so when you have a pap smear, this is where the brush is going and it's sampling cells from here and here. Um, because that's a really effective way to prevent cervical cancer and detect these types of problems early on. Um, but basically this is like the neck of the womb and it's capable of dilating and shortening and opening up completely to accommodate delivery of a baby um, if someone is pregnant. Um, but typically during the course of the pregnancy, it remains closed and it is usually filled with jelly or mucus that's going to protect whatever's happening in here from the outside world, right? Um, and then you have the vagina here and it's this hollow tube that is lined by these ridges. Um, it's basically folds of mucosal tissue. Um, there's internal and external parts. We're gonna talk about the external parts in a little bit, um, but basically this connects the uterus to the outer body and it's made up of mainly muscle and skin. Um, people refer to this in different ways. They call it birth canal. Um, and that really isn't inclusive because that's only relevant if someone is pregnant. Um, but this is the pathway that the baby will take um, if you're having a vaginal delivery. Um, this allows menstrual blood to, to leave a woman's body um, if they're not pregnant and they're just having a regular cycle. And this is obviously where um, semen is deposited during sexual intercourse. Um, so it's a very dynamic, Part of the body that is capable of stretching and accommodating 
um, and it's very forgiving. And they have these things called fornices or afornix, which are these corners. Um, and you know, it, it's it's not as simple as just this hollow tube as what I initially described. It's it's got a lot of redundant tissue and folds and. I'm sure April will have a lot more to say about that. 